All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning. You're listening to the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 17th of June. India's retaliatory tariffs on the US came into effect on Sunday with 28 US products, including almonds, walnuts and pulses, now attracting higher import duty. The higher tariffs are a response to the US withdrawing the Generalized System of Preferences program for Indian exporters on the 5th of June. Yesterday, in an all-party meeting convened by the government, the opposition demanded that issues such as farm distress, unemployment and drought should be debated upon in Parliament. The budget session of Parliament begins today. The southwest monsoon is expected to advance further up north as Cyclone Vayu loses intensity, paving the way for the wind system to move towards the Arabian Sea. The India Meteorological Department said this in a weather forecast on Sunday. The overall monsoon deficiency in the country has reached 43% due to the sluggish pace so far, but the expectation is that it will pick up over the next two to three days. In corporate news, Lupin is recalling more than 18,000 bottles of an antibiotic drug used to treat bacterial infections from the U.S. market. Lupin Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, which is the company's U.S. subsidiary, is recalling the drugs after a complaint was received about a metal piece in one of the bottles the drug was being sold in. And that's according to information available on the U.S. Food and Drug Administration website. A large number of individuals and entities, including independent directors, top management personnel, ratings agencies and auditors formerly associated with crisis-hit infrastructure leasing and financial services, may soon face action by Capital Market Regulator Securities and Exchange Board of India for their role in the alleged fraud at the group. In international news, Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince has blamed Iran for last week's attack on tankers near the Strait of Hormuz, adding to accusations that are stoking tensions in the region that supplies a third of the world's oil. U.S. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo has said that there was no doubt that Iran was responsible for the attacks on two oil tankers that were leaving the Persian Gulf last week and that the U.S. would guarantee safe commercial navigation going forward. Brent crude, which not too long back was trading close to $75 to a barrel, was just above $62 to a barrel last I checked. Now, U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross has downplayed the prospect of a major trade deal emerging from a possible meeting between President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping at the Group of 20 summit in Japan this month. That's after Trump said on Friday that it doesn't matter if he gets a meeting with Xi at the G20 summit. Hong Kong rose up in defiance yesterday, a day after Leader Carrie Lam suspended a contentious extradition bill jamming the streets with hundreds of thousands of protesters and drawing a formal apology from the embattled chief executive. Protesters wanted the complete withdrawal of the bill which opponents say threatens Hong Kong's tenuous autonomy from China. The largely peaceful crowds showed up in significantly larger numbers even after Lam announced on Saturday that she was suspending efforts to pass the legislation. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's frequent assurance that sustaining the US economic expansion is the Federal Reserve's overarching goal is opening the door to potentially aggressive interest rate cuts. The timing, size and whether such moves are indeed in his plans may become clear when Powell and his colleagues meet on Tuesday and Wednesday this week in Washington. In international markets, Asian markets are trading mixed at the start today after US equities ended last week on a muted note. The Nikkei was trading higher by about 0.1% last I checked, but the other two early rises in Asia were trading lower. With that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning Darshan, how are we looking today? 
Hi Alex, good morning, good morning everyone. Global queues are muted at this point of time and the SGX Nifty is also indicating a weak outlook. But lots of stocks that we need to watch out for. Reliance Infra after much delay has announced its numbers. Revenues were up 30%, EBITDA up 234%, which means EBITDA margins of 22% versus 8.6% last time around. So operationally it seems a decent number, but reports a net loss of 3300 crores due to impairment of Reliance Naval and Reliance Power. The exceptional loss of was of 8500 crores and that that was partly adjusted against the reserve the auditor raises concern on investment in group companies and on going ahead concerns of the subsidiary watch out for jet airways today the economic times has reported that the decision on jets uh, course likely is today uh, the lenders are set to finalize the resolution for the airline today so that is important M&M will be in focus. They have signed a share agreement to acquire 11.25% stake in a Switzerland-based company for 30 crores. And the acquisition is for developing technology in the group's farm division, which has been actually facing a lot of issues currently. Devan Housing Finance has said they have paid interest in principle of NCDs worth 125 crores. That was due on June 14. India Bulls Housing Finance has also paid all the interest in NCDs, which was due on June 17. Also on India Bulls Housing Finance, the promoters released pledge on 40 2 lakh shares on full repayment of the loan. Watch out for NDTV. SAB has handed a two year ban on NDTV's Pranay Roy and Radhika Roy, and they are barred from markets and asked to step down as directors from the board and key managerial post. BHEL wins a 800 crore EPC order for 200 megawatt solar power plant. Graha Finance, uh, the block deal that happened on Friday, now it's come to know that Society General has been the buyer. Reliance Capital Access Trust Services sold in additional 35 lakh shares in the company. Company, rights board to consider a bonus on June 24th. Couple of brokerages, uh, JP Morgan has maintained a neutral on Reliance Industries, but they're saying that the refining and pet chem environment remains weak. The large downside is there to re- earnings if GRMs and oil prices do not recover sharply, and no signs of tariff moving higher on GEO, which actually cannot offset the weakness in the pet chem business. Bank of America Merrill Lynch believes that HDFC Bank has a target price of 2750. The bank is a Assessing benefits from semi urban and rural push. The rural and semi rural markets will fuel the bank's next phase of growth. And finally, Goldman Sachs says that the credit rating downgrade is outpacing the upgrade for the first time in the past five years. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that, log on to our website, bloombuckquin.com, and click on the All You Need to Know tab, and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks, Darshan. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthew signing off. Have a lovely day and an amazing week ahead. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Sheila Ditya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy. 